To operate Trilogy 100, you must be familiar with the screen display. In this segment, we'll review some of its symbols and operations. Press the Start-Stop button on the front of the device to begin therapy. The display screen and the backlights on the buttons turn on. The red and yellow alarm LEDs turn on momentarily, and an audible indicator lets you know that therapy has started. A startup screen with Trilogy 100 and the software version appears briefly on the display screen. The ventilator returns to the most recently defined ventilator settings, and a monitor screen appears. The appearance of this screen may vary depending upon how your clinician has set up your device. Trilogy 100 has a simple and a detailed screen view. On the simple display screen, the top section is called the monitor panel. It shows which of the ventilator's many therapy modes is in use. If any special features are active, an indication will appear beside the therapy mode. If the physician has ordered two different prescriptions, for example, one setting for daytime and another one for nighttime, you will see primary and secondary indicated. A patient breath symbol displays during a patient triggered breath. A bar graph displays the current pressure level. Pressure is the amount of force it takes to deliver a breath to the lungs. The bar graph moves to the right as the pressure increases during inhalation and moves to the left as it decreases during exhalation. The blue bar on the graph indicates peak pressure. This is the highest pressure the patient has reached during each breath. If the volume mode is set, you'll see a tab with an L below the bar graph. If the patient pressure falls below this level, the low pressure alarm will sound. An H below the bar graph indicates the pressure which triggers a high pressure level alarm. In the center of the screen, the current date and time is displayed. The status panel at the bottom of the screen displays informational symbols. You may see an open lock, which is a feature used by your home care provider. You see this symbol when the secure digital or SD memory card is in the slot. If you see this one, there's an error with the SD card. When an external battery is attached, you see this. When the symbol is green, the battery is fully charged. The level of the green shading will go down as the battery charge decreases. You know the detachable battery is in place when you see this symbol. Here again, the amount of green shading gives you an idea of how much charge is left in the battery. The internal battery is indicated by a horizontal symbol. You can tell that this one is fully charged because the symbol is completely green. A black box appears around the battery which is currently supplying power to the ventilator. A lightning bolt over the detachable or internal battery symbol means that the battery is being charged. A bell icon with an X drawn through it indicates that the pause button has been pressed and the audio pause is active. Finally, the ramp symbol appears when the ramp feature is in use. To end therapy, press the Start-Stop button on the front of the device. You will hear a short tone. The display screen will pose a question, Power Off? Press the right button to answer Yes. Both the backlights and the display screen will turn off. On the detailed display screen, the top section is called the Monitor Panel. It shows which of the many therapy modes is in use. If any special features are active, an indication will appear beside the therapy mode. If the physician has ordered two different prescriptions, for example, one setting for daytime and another for nighttime, you will see primary and secondary settings indicated. On the right side of the screen, you see the date and time. A patient breath symbol displays during a patient triggered breath. A bar graph displays the current pressure level. Pressure is the amount of force it takes to deliver a breath to the lungs. The bar graph moves to the right as the pressure increases during inhalation and moves to the left as it decreases during exhalation. The blue bar on the graph indicates peak pressure. 
This is the highest pressure the patient has reached during each breath. If the volume mode is set, you'll see a tab with an L below the bar graph. If the patient pressure falls below this level, the low pressure alarm will sound. An H below the bar graph indicates the pressure which triggers a high pressure level alarm. The detailed screen provides additional clinical information. Below the bar chart, the patient's pressure appears measured in centimeters of water. RR, or respiratory rate, tells you how many breaths per minute or BPMs. Tidal volume is given in milliliters. And finally, if you have a passive circuit attached, you'll see a measurement of leak in liters per minute and exhaled tidal volume. If you're using an active circuit, inhaled tidal volume is displayed. The second panel, in the detailed view, shows measured settings. PIP, the peak inspiratory pressure, displays the highest pressure delivered on the patient's last breath. Just below that is the mean airway pressure, or MAP. That is the average pressure in the patient's airway. Beside that, IE shows the amount of time inhaling compared to the time exhaling. Peak flow, the final reading in that row, is the highest inspiratory flow delivered during a patient's last breath. Below that, minute ventilation, shortened to MinVent, displays the amount of air delivered to the patient over the last minute. Now, let's move on to the status panel at the bottom of the screen. Various symbols appear here to show what features are activated. You may see an open lock, which is an indicator used by the home care provider. You see this symbol when the secure digital, or SD memory card, is in the slot. If you see this one, there's an error with the SD card. When an external battery is attached, you see this. When the symbol is green, the battery is fully charged. The level of the green shading will go down as the battery charge decreases. You know the detachable battery is in place when you see this symbol. Here again, the amount of green shading gives you an idea of how much charge is left in the battery. The internal battery is indicated by a horizontal symbol. You can tell that this battery is fully charged because the symbol is completely green. A black box appears around the battery which is currently supplying power to the ventilator. A lightning bolt over the detachable or internal battery symbol means that the battery is being charged. A bell icon with an X drawn through it indicates that the pause button has been pressed and the audio pause is active. Finally, the ramp symbol appears when the ramp feature is in use. To end therapy, press the start-stop button on the front of the device. You will hear a short tone. The display screen will pose a question, power off? Press the right button to answer yes. The backlights and display screen will turn off. Menu settings allow you to make some choices about Trilogy 100. To enter the menu screens from the monitor screen, press the up button on the ventilator. Menu options appear on the lower half of the display screen. At the bottom of the display screen is an on-screen button panel. As you can see, these buttons correspond to the control buttons on the ventilator. You can use these buttons to navigate and select menu settings. If the home care provider has set up a dual prescription, this option will appear on the menu screen. You can change to either your primary or secondary prescription settings. Use the center up-down button to highlight the switch to primary or switch to secondary options. Press the right button to select it. Trilogy 100 will ask you to confirm that you want to make the change. You can press the left button to answer no. In this case, I'll press the right button to answer yes and switch to the new prescription. The display screen returns to the main menu after a selection is entered.
If there is an SD card in your ventilator, Safely Remove SD Card will appear as a menu option on the menu screen. Select this option when you want to remove the SD card. When the Remove SD Card confirmation message appears, remove the card. If you press the left button or don't remove the card within 60 seconds, the confirmation message will close and Trilogy will continue to write the data to the card. Trilogy 100 allows you to view and change certain prescription settings if these settings were enabled by the home care provider. To do this, use the up-down button to highlight the My Settings option on the main menu. Press the button under Select and the My Settings menu screen appears. Use the up-down button to highlight the setting you want to change. To modify a setting once it is highlighted, press the right button. Use the up-down button to scroll through the available settings. Press down to decrease the setting or press up to increase the setting. Once you've chosen the setting you want, press the right button to save the new setting. You can now move to another setting you would like to change or exit the My Settings menu by pressing the left button to return to the main menu. There are a variety of options you can set with Trilogy 100. To look at the options, from the menu screen, use the up-down button to highlight options and the right button to select. In the Options menu, you can view and change the alarm volume and keypad lock. To adjust the audible alarm, move the up-down button to highlight alarm volume. Press the right button to modify. Use the up button to change to loud and the down button if you prefer soft. Press the right button to say OK to your selection. The display will return to the Options menu. If there are no other options you would like to change, press the left button to finish. The keypad lock option can be helpful to families with young children. When it is turned on, the left, right, and up-down buttons are locked. The audio pause and start-stop buttons continue to function normally. To lock out the keyboard, select Keypad Lock from the Options list. The up-down button lets you toggle between on and off. Use the right button to say OK to change the setting to on. When you enable this feature, the new setting does not take effect until the keypad lock inactivity timer has expired or until you exit the menu and return to the monitor screen. You can temporarily unlock the keypad from the monitor screen by pressing any of the locked buttons. A directional message will appear. Follow the directions on screen, which tell you to hold the right button down for five seconds. When the keypad is unlocked, an audible confirmation indicator sounds and the on-screen buttons on the display reappear. Other items on the options menu include keypad backlighting, LCD brightness, screensaver, and date display. Trilogy 100 also has an alarm log, which is very helpful to caregivers and physicians. The alarm log displays the 20 most recent alarm events, with the newest events shown first. The list shows the date and time that each alarm occurred and how long it was on. Trilogy 100 summarizes information about its settings so caregivers can find it quickly and easily. Press the Up button on the ventilator to get to the menu screen. Highlight Information and press the button under Select. Use the up-down button to scroll through the information to see current settings, device options, and system settings. You will not be able to make any changes in this section. Trilogy 100 provides continuous or intermittent ventilatory support. So it is very important that it operates correctly and without interruption.
To alert you to issues with the equipment or with the patient's breathing, the ventilator has a number of alarms. Make sure the volume of the device is turned up loud enough so that you can hear these alarms clearly over other room or equipment noise. The ventilator has three types of alarms, high priority, medium priority, and low priority. The sound and visual cues help you recognize the urgency. In addition, informational messages and confirmation alerts notify you of conditions that may require attention, but are not alarms. High priority alarms sound like this. That's three beeps followed by two beeps. At the same time that the alarm sounds, the audio pause button on the front of the ventilator flashes red. When you hear or see a high priority alarm, respond immediately, as a high priority alarm alerts you to critical issues with the patient's breathing or with the ventilator's operation. Always look at the patient before attending to the equipment to ensure that he or she is being properly ventilated. If not, use a manual resuscitator to help the patient breathe. When you are sure that the patient is stable, turn your attention to the ventilator. The alarms and message screen will show a priority alarm message highlighted in red. You can temporarily silence the audio indicator by pressing the audio pause button. An audio pause message displays in the menu banner on the alarm display screen. The alarm will be silent for a minute, and if the problem is not corrected, sound again. You can press the audio pause button again for another minute of silence as many times as necessary. When audio pause is active and you are on the monitor screen, an audio pause symbol appears. When the problem is corrected, the alarm LED, audible alarm, and the alarm background color will shut off. However, the alarm text remains on the screen until you press the left button to reset the screen. This is a medium priority alarm. You hear three beeps in a repeating pattern and the audio pause button flashes yellow. Medium priority alarms require prompt attention. Once again, you can silence the alarm for a minute by pressing the audio pause button. An alarm message will appear on the display screen. Medium priority messages appear highlighted in yellow. Trilogy 100 also has a number of low priority alarms, which convey information that you should be aware of. For example, a button is stuck, or the detachable battery needs to be charged. Low priority alarms are two beeps together in a repeating pattern. The audio pause button shows a solid yellow light. The alarm message is highlighted in yellow. Trilogy also displays informational messages and confirmation alerts that notify you of conditions that require attention. For example, the AC power cord is unplugged or the battery is no longer charging. You will hear a single beep when an informational message appears on the display screen. Trilogy 100 has a variety of messages and alarms. You can find more information on specific messages and alarms, as well as recommended responses, in your manual. It's a good idea to keep the manual readily available when the ventilator is in use, so you can refer to it when a question arises. If you're unable to correct the problem, contact your home care provider for assistance. If at any time the patient has difficulty breathing, call for emergency medical assistance. The Trilogy 100 ventilator is a medical device, so it is important to keep it clean. To avoid electrical shock, begin by unplugging the ventilator. You can wipe down the outside of Trilogy with water mixed with one of a number of different cleaners, mild detergent, 3% hydrogen peroxide, 91% isopropyl alcohol, or a 10% bleach solution. Dip a rag into the cleaning solution and wring it out until it is just damp, not dripping wet. Wipe down the outside of the ventilator and detachable battery pack, being careful not to allow liquid to drip into the ventilator case or the detachable battery pack. 
Be particularly cautious when cleaning the display, as it can be scratched by abrasive cleaners. After washing, use a soft, dry cloth to remove any residual cleaner. Allow the device to dry completely before plugging in the power cord. With normal use, the gray foam filter should be cleaned at least once every two weeks. The filter is in a recessed area on the back. Remove it by gently squeezing the filter in the center and pulling it toward you. Insert a clean filter to take its place. Examine the filter you have removed from the unit for cleanliness and integrity. If the foam filter is torn or damaged, it needs to be replaced. Wash the gray foam filter in warm water with a mild detergent and rinse it thoroughly. Allow the filter to air dry completely before putting it back into the device.